Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we'll have for you is episode 6 of my Football Manager 23 beta save with Tottenham Hotspur. If you do go in to enjoy today's video, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could try and hit 20 likes on today's video, that'd be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you are new as well. We are now on the road to 400 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed. If you haven't already, with that post notification bell on, it's free to do so and it does massively help out. Thank you so much for the support on the series so far. We've got a big decision to make in today's episode. We could sell Harry Kane. Let's get into it. So as you can see here, we have agreed a deal for Harry Kane to join Real Madrid. This will go through on January the 4th, so he'll still have a couple more games left with the club. He is currently on £200,000 a week at a contract at the end of next season, 29 years of age, and he wanted to leave the club, but I suggested the offer to him about, I just basically put him on the transfer list, see what offers we were maybe looking at. If he's going to be like 30, 40 million, we may as well keep him. We got some decent offers in, we managed to negotiate fairly well with Real Madrid. The actual transfer offer, is um, £44.5 million up front and then £44.5 million in six six monthly instalments. So it will be about £8 to £9 million in total. And I think I'm going to accept it. I do think I'm going to accept this and we're going to move Harry Kane on. There we have it, confirmed. Harry Kane will officially leave Tottenham Hotspur on the 4th of January 2023. It's a big decision to make, especially when... He's currently our top goal scorer, and apart from Son and Goncalves, our only real goal threat, maybe Richarlison as well. But Harry Kane, who's averaging 8.02 in his last five matches, the more I'm doing this, the more I'm beginning to regret my decision. Harry Kane will be leaving the club. We have an early assessment here of our first youth intake. We've got a five-star excellent intake, which is great to see. At least one of our goalkeepers looks a great prospect. At least one of our centre-backs looks promising. We have what looks a top prospect in the centre of midfield. And we also have one winger who looks a very handy prospect. Three central midfielders, three centre-backs, two right wingers in there as well. A decent striker um, in there as well, but we appear short of the required standard. Full-back doesn't really look great. Wide midfielders, attacking midfielders, defensive midfielders. All wing backs don't look great either, but apart from defensive midfielders and attacking midfielders, we don't really play with any of them positions. So, very impressed you'll like to see there. Very nice. I also forgot to tell you in the last episode that Josiah Linton has gone out on loan to Maidstone for the campaign. A youngster, he's probably never really going to get into the first team, but it's more transfer business that I thought I'd let you know of. Here we have it then. Here's how we line up for the first game of today's episode. Away to Everton in the Carabao Cup fourth round. We've got Lloris in goal. A back four of Roberto, Romero, Ibanez and Sessegnon. Coop Miners and Basuma in the midfield. Kulisevsky on the right. Son on the left. And Goncalves in behind Harry Kane. Obviously Harry Kane will be leaving the club. But we are still going to be letting him play until that transfer does officially go through. He might get including this game, maybe three more matches before he does officially leave the club. We do need to sign a replacement. If you have any suggestions for the replacement, let me know down in the comment section down below. But I've gone with the full strength team here because the Carabao Cup is probably one of our best chances of winning a trophy. I believe we have drawn a way to Blackpool, I want to say, in the third round of the FA Cup as well. But the Carabao Cup is our focus of today's game. Hopefully, we can get in to round number five, which I think want to say is the round 32 i'm not really too sure kill the sevsky on the ball into the box he finds son cleared away though by gordon basuma picks it up looks for a ball out wide here into sergio roberto beats his man ball into the box is eventually cleared only as far as coop miners who picks up and strikes oh what a goal it's tune coop miners with 10 minutes on the clock it's everton nil tottenham hotspur won a fantastic strike from one of our most recent signings a very very underrated signing in my opinion for 22 two million pounds this man is proving to be an absolute steal that is an absolutely unbelievable strike on his left foot left foot left foot sorry the keeper stood no chance 10 minutes on the clock we take the lead perfect start a free kick here for Everton which Michael Enko takes and finds Onana well intercepted though from Coop Miners he might be on a booking but he's still happy to be sticking in the committed challenges Kulisevsky looks for the ball down the line but again poor ball from Kulisevsky he's not been great so far this season not exactly set the world on fire there's been the odd moment of quality from him but can't say I've been overly impressed from any of the front three really Son, Kane and Kulisevsky from what I expected considering their star rating and their actual ability I expected a lot more from all three of them to be be honest with you, Ibanez has the ball here. He goes into Sessignon down the line to Yumin Son. This is where I need him to take on four plays and stick one in the top corner. Oh, make a pass like that. That's unbelievable from Yumin Son. Pedro Goncalves chooses the outside outside of the foot shot, and unfortunately, it goes over the bar. Kulisevsky on the ball here, looking to go to the byline. He beats his man. Can he get a ball into the box? He 
does. I don't know if that was a cross-come shot. Goncalves couldn't quite get on the end of it. 35 minutes on the clock. Still 1-0 to Tottenham. We could do the second goal, though. Son will take this free kick towards the back post. Cleared away by Calvert-Lewin. Only as far as Pedro Goncalves. He finds Romero. Shoots from distance over the bar. Not long left to go now before half-time. I would say we are comfortably ahead at the break. Deservedly ahead. Michael Enko with a throw in here for Everton as we move into the second half. Onana now picks up the ball. He'll be looking to carry them forward here. It's a good driving run to be fair and he finds Anthony Gordon. What can he do with it? Intercepted by Hyunmin Son who goes back to Ibanez and will look to start again. I'm still looking for a goalkeeper. The board actually gave us another £50 million to spend in the January transfer window which is good. On top of the Harry Kane money, on top of any other money like the Eric Dyer that we've already got of players going out of the door. So I'm going to wait for all that money to come in before we start making signings and all that sort of stuff. I anticipate we'll probably have about 200, maybe £250 million to spend this January transfer window. I'm certainly going to be looking to spend it all. We do have a penalty here though. VAR are going to check it. A penalty has been awarded and with 56 minutes on the clock Harry Kane has a chance to get on the score sheet once again. Potentially his last ever goal for Spurs. Who knows? Harry Kane steps up scores obviously I mean he did miss a penalty a couple games ago but it's his 16th goal of the season for Harry Kane and it's Everton nil Tottenham Hotspur too I think we'll look to make our substitutions as well once this replay has been shown we'll get Coop Miners off and players like that who are a little bit tired maybe on a yellow card or maybe just not playing particularly well at all I feel like at 2-0 away from home we're cruising in the match I feel like we should be able to see this game out so a couple changes then Perisic is going to come on for Hyunmin Son Brian Gill is going to come on for Kulisevsky We'll also bring on, actually we'll go to the 4-3-3 defensive mode and we'll bring on maybe Hoiberg. To be honest with you, put Hoiberg as the ball winning midfielder, put Coop Miners as a deep line playmaker. Don't mind that at all. We've still got three, uh, sorry, two more substitutions. We'll get Jed Spence on for Sergio Roberto. And final substitution of the game, we shall bring on... Maybe Bentancor for Basuma, something like that. Maybe, I mean, Bentancor, not the greatest, to be honest with you. Maybe Bentancor is a player we look to move on. I know he only signed in the summer, I think, in real life, but just only 16.5 million, only a 6.75 average rating so far. I mean, he is on the incline, but at 25 years of age, £75,000 a week. If you can get something similar to that, what they value Matt. If we can get a transfer similar to that sort of value, then I certainly would be inclined to accept. Throw in here, which Ryan Sessegnon will take. It's scrappy a little bit at the moment. Sessegnon with a deep ball into the box. Looking for Ben Tancor, who gets underneath it. Cleared away by Michael Enko. It comes down to Jed Spence, loses the ball. Whitaker has a chance here to counter for Everton. Ball comes over the top, but that's so easy for Ibanez to deal with. He has been very, very good. I can't lie, he's been a very, very good signing. Underrated, in my opinion. Never heard of him before this save, so I'm, you know, glad to see that this transfer has worked out well for him. Players like Coop Miners, I've obviously heard of before. Never heard of Ibanez before. We have been Building an attack though on this right hand side. Jed Spence, great ball into Harry Kane who strikes just wide of the post. Maybe if he's in Real Madrid shirt, he tries harder to score there. Who knows? Approaching the end of today's match, three minutes of added time, but we are going to keep the clean sheet. He's going to finish Everton nil, Tottenham Hotspur 2. A great start to today's episode as we progress through into the next round of the Carabao Cup. I don't know when the next round draw will be, but we are through to the quarterfinals. Well, I didn't realise we were already that far into the competition. Already into the quarterfinals, that's great to see. The final match of today's episode will be at home to Nottingham Forest, and then the next episode that you see, you'll see all the January transfer window business and all that sort of stuff. A bit of transfer business before the window does actually open some more. Malarkey, Fagan, Walcott will be leaving the club. He'll be joining AEK Athens in the Greek Super League 1 on a permanent basis. We're going to be getting an okay amount of money for him. He's a youngster, he's 20 years of age. Two and a half star potential ability. He's never really going to get into the first team, so he will be another player to part in the club. Here we go then. We have the Carabao Cup but quarter final draw. As I've kept reinstating throughout the series so far, this is one of our best chances of silverware. The fans want Liverpool, Brighton or Leeds. We are going to quickly view the draw as well. It is going to be hosted by Roy Keane. That's fairly interesting. Chelsea versus... Wolves is match number one. The second match then is Tottenham. We're at home. Hopefully we can get somebody maybe like a Leeds. I think are these the only available team. So it's either Liverpool, Man U, Leeds, Brighton or Brentford. As long as it's not Man U or Liverpool, I'll be very happy. It's Leeds. I'll take that. Leeds at home in the quarterfinal of the Carabao Cup. I will absolutely take that. We can advance forward through to the rest of them. Oh, I didn't see what the full ones were. But Leeds United at home. I believe this is only... A one-leg quarterfinal as well. So we may come back for that. When will that fixture take place? That will take place 
Um, not until January. Probably won't see that, to be honest with you, unless we lose. Well, that's not ideal, is it? Rodrigo Bentancor is going to be out for six weeks. So if we wanted to sell him in January, we're not going to be able to because he's not going to pass a medical. Brilliant. Just what I wanted to see. Here's how we line up then for the second game of today's episode at home to Nottingham Forest. Now, we all know what happened the last time we played the team who were bottom of the league at home. We lost 2-0 to Bournemouth. Fingers crossed we can make it three points, though, in today's episode. We've got Lloris in goal, a back four of Roberto, Ibanez, Lengley, who comes in for the suspended, Romero and Sessegnon, Basuma and Coop Miners in the midfield, Kuldasevsky on the right, Son on the left, and once again, it's gone Calves in behind Harry Kane, who's actually going to get more games than what I thought, because we've got, like three games in five days, something like that. And he doesn't actually leave until the 4th of January. So he's going to get a couple more games under his belt. I'm pretty sure Nottingham Forest will be playing a five at the back with also two defensive midfielders and it's going to be an absolute nightmare to break down but that's our job to try and find a way to break them down run tv once again we obviously line up in our 4-2-3-1 formation as we do for pretty much every home game or game that isn't against the top six side they are going to be playing against what we expected really just leaving Lingard, Awonye and Johnson up front apart from their last match they've lost their last four in a row they've picked up nine points all season I mean, Bournemouth only picked up 12, so who knows what could happen. Let's do a football. Sergio Roboto picks the ball up, finds Yevs Basuma. He carries it forward and feeds it into Kulisevsky. We want him running at Joe Wallerill, who picked up a yellow card in the second minute. Kulisevsky finds Coop Miners into Pedro Goncalves, who strikes. And Pedro Goncalves has his eighth goal of the season. He chose power. I thought that had gone over the bar, but eight minutes on the clock. It's Tottenham Hotspur 1, Nottingham Forest 0. The perfect start to today's match. We've got to be beating teams with all due respect, like Nottingham Forest at home. Coop Miners had the freedom of the penalty area to pick out Goncalves, he turns on the left foot, off the underside of the crossbar, into the back of the net, we take the lead very early on in today's game, that's exactly the start we were looking for, Kulisevsky picks up the ball here, looking for that ball over top to Harry Kane, who I think's onside, he chips the keeper, it's over the bar, he was onside, and once again it makes you think, if he's in a Real Madrid shirt there, is he trying that little bit harder to more guarantee the goal with the finish rather than going with a cute fancy chip that's really poor again from Harry Kane and it's chances like that granted he scored 16 goals but he should have scored 60 goals because he's had so many chances the system that I play creates so many chances and we've seen that even Richarlison scored 12 goals this season and the guy's only started about five matches so it's not hard to score goals in my system which Harry Kane's struggling to do at the moment as Hyunmin Son taps on for 2-0 his seventh goal of the season he might be a player who moves on maybe in the summer I don't think we can lose both Kane and Hyunmin Son in the same January transfer window I think that would be a little bit absurd to be honest with you but it, it could be something that happens great play though from Roberto to play the ball over the top into Kulisevsky. He crosses on his weak foot for Hyunmin Son. Roberto, to be fair, who was promised to play as a box-to-box -box central midfielder, has played every game so far as a right-back, and he's not complained about it once. That's exactly the type of player I want at my club. Corner ball for his here, which Hyunmin Son will take. It'll be a right-footed out-swinger. Ball comes into the box, looking for Coop Miners. Heads just wide. Langley on the ball now for Spurs. What can he do with it? Given a rare opportunity to start this match. The ball's worked its way into Coop Miners. Back to Langley. Keeping the ball very nice now. Forrest don't really know what to do with themselves. Hyunmin Son picks it up. On this left-hand side, heavy touch though. And Frula is able to step in. Kiate now into Nico Williams. The former Liverpool man driving forward with it here. Looks for that ball over the top. Looking for Brennan Johnson. Ibanez, heavy touch. Johnson's got a chance. Shoots over the bar. Basuma picks the ball up in a bit of space here, driving towards the Forest penalty area. He's about eight yards out and he's absolutely blazed that one over the bar. I mean, look at the stats. We've absolutely battered them so far. I've no idea how it isn't more than two. Coop Miners has a chance with this free kick, though. Oh, he is unbelievable. If you have a spare £22 million laying around, go and get Tayun Coop Miners. We didn't need a central midfielder, but he's just so good that I simply had to sign him. It was absolute steal for £22 million. What a free kick that is. It's his fourth goal of the season. It's an absolute screamer, and we are deservedly going into the break ahead. Not just ahead, 3-0. We are absolutely battering them, and this is where we take the opportunity now to make some early substitutions. Hoiberg is going to come on at four Coop Miners. We also want to bring Richarlison on at four Harry Kane. We'll get Brian Gill on at four Kulisevsky. Perisic can come on as well at four Hyunmin Son. Brian Gill is seriously not developing how I would have liked him. How I would have liked him to at the moment. We'll also get Jed Spence on for Basuma. We'll give Roberto an opportunity to play as a central midfielder. And Jed Spence can come on at right back once again. We'll get into 
the second half. Five changes made at the break, but I can't see us throwing away a 3-0 lead at home to the bottom of the league when they've picked up nine points all season. Brian Gill picks the ball up here, slots it through into a Charleston chance. Oh, big save Dean Henderson. I thought I was going to glitch through his head then and find its way into the back of the net. We will have a corner, which Hoiberg will take. It'll be another outswinger here. What can he do with this delivery? A ball comes into the box. It's a good ball, to be fair. Langley can't get on the end of it. Goncalves picks it up on the edge of the box. Good tackle, though, from the Forest defender. Free kick for us here, which Goncalves will take towards the back post. Brian Gill heads over the bar. Free kick here for Pedro Goncalves. With Coop Miners no longer on the pitch, what can Goncalves do with this one? Oh, he forces a great save, to be fair, from Dean Henderson, who's keeping Forrest in this at the moment. Without him, it could be six or seven. Corner ball, which Brian Gill will take. It'll be another outswinger. Left footed ball in. Hoiberg can't get on the end of it again. Ibanez picks it up. He goes back into Sergio Roboto, given a rare chance in his central midfield spot. But that is the end of the highlight. Look at the statistics. We've absolutely battered them for this first hour. Well, there's not long left on this clock now. The game has been pretty comfortable, to be honest with you. Not a lot really happened in the second half, but it doesn't matter. The job was done in the first half, full-time. Tottenham Hotspur 3, Nottingham Forest 0. We go now into Brighton away before the January transfer window opens. But the next time that I will see you will be once all the transfer business has done. Obviously, Harry Kane has now officially left the club. He will no longer be a part of these episodes anymore. We need a replacement for him. He's actually already on the decline. He was five-star current ability. He's now four and a half star. So we need a striker. Could do with the centre half with Eric Dyer leaving. Maybe another left winger as well. We've definitely got some business to do. Potentially a goalkeeper in there as well. Thank you very much for watching today's episode though. If you have enjoyed, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could try and hit 20 likes. As I said at the start of today's video, that would be absolutely class. Subscribe if you are new as well. We are now on the road to 400 subscribers. So please make sure you are subscribed. If you haven't already with that post notification bell on, it's free to do so and it does massively help out. Three players will actually be returning to the club after their loan i mean some of them not interested in extensions but yeah they'll be returning to the club thank you for watching though have a great rest of your day and i shall see you all very soon for the transfer special peace